How do you do? There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. And that knowledge frightened the man in this story, because he knew that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. His problem was conquered only when his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Hello? Uh, Brett, are, are you alone? Yeah, why wouldn't I be? Because I know you. Are you sitting down? Why? What's up? I'm pregnant. Uh, d d are, are, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Wha what are you gonna do? Have the baby? Look, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not ready to get married. I'm not ready to be a mother either, but it's gonna happen. And you're the daddy. <laughs> Sharing the truth that makes you free, this is Unshackled, true life stories of real people, dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. What is truth? A powerful man once asked, blind to the truth standing before him. Homeless people are often blind to the truth as well. When they come to Pacific Garden Mission, they need more than anything to face the reality of how they lost their way in the world so they can change. That's the goal of the old lighthouse, to transform lives. Where do they begin? By providing meals, clothing, and a safe place to sleep for hundreds of homeless men, women, and children. Everything is free to the homeless, even medical and dental care in the mission clinic. Counselors and pastors introduce them to the one who accomplishes that transformation. Now, for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3145 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. Hello? Hi, uh... Dad, I, I won't be able to come into work for a while. Why not? You know we got a job to finish by the end of the month. I, I, I broke my hand. How'd you do that? Slammed my fist into a dresser. Practicing karate? No. My girlfriend is pregnant and she's not willing to move in with me, so I slammed my fist against a dresser. That was stupid. We have a lot of jobs lined up, Brett. Yeah, I got bigger problems than that, Dad. Another girl's pregnant, too. Two at once? Th yeah. Didn't your mother teach you anything? The man in our story was self-centered and violent then. Other adjectives fit too, but we'll let him tell you how they dropped away. Parental guidance is suggested due to the subject matter contained in the true testimony of Brett McCormick right now on Unshackled. My parents divorced when I was nine, and I stayed with my mom while my older brother lived with dad, my two stepbrothers, and their mom. I wanted so much to be with them instead of being at home alone, insecure and scared because mom was gone all the time, working two jobs. She never said that she loved me. I was more of a possession to her. The next year, I discovered a stack of porn magazines under my grandfather's bed in our hunting cabin. I was hooked from that point, and my obsession grew. Brett, are you in there? Uh, j just a minute. Come on, I have to take you home. What? Mom said I could stay another week. Yeah, well, she changed her mind. That isn't fair. She always does that. I have to drive you home, and then all the way back here to finish the vacation with your brothers. Now get your stuff together, and let's go. She lied to me. Insecurity and loneliness just increased my addiction to pornography throughout my junior high years. Fighting and bullying was my way of expressing my anger and frustration for my despair in life. Mom remarried and I discovered a porn video among my stepdad's collection. My dad always made suggestive comments about women whenever we were together. Mom and my stepdad had a bad fight and soon after they divorced. After high school, 
I went to college in North Carolina for a year, but my lifestyle and addictions destroyed relationships, so I didn't return. Did you flunk out down there? No, uh, my grades were good. Going back to college? Yeah, but I want to work and earn some money, too. Well, you can work with me in the business. I, I don't know construction, but I, I can learn. Okay. If you work hard, you can make good money. Can I live with you then, Dad? I don't see why not. We have room now. I learned fast, and I worked hard. So I earned my dad lots of money. And he brought me into the business. I dropped out of college completely and bought my own house so I could party. I chewed tobacco, drank hard, and smoked marijuana. I always wanted to prove myself, so I was easily drawn into fights. Hey. Hey. Oh, take it yeah. easy, Brett. These guys are bikers. Yeah. This guy. Who invited them anyway? What are you guys thinking? Look, there's enough of us. Let's go get him, huh? Teach him some manners. <laughs> yeah, you want a piece of me? Come and get it. Yeah. Come on. 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 Come you knocked out your teeth. I thought you knew how to fight. Oh, that one of our friends helped us, man. Come on, right back here. Come on, hey, mind you. your own you business, you bunch of losers. Yeah, you're on your own, Brett. Yeah. I can't fight again. Yeah, well, I can. Come here. Oh, I got you. Come on. 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 I woke up in an ambulance with blood all over my face, so I decided to learn karate. Continued my pursuit with girls. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> hey, look at the girl in this picture. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, Ooh. you must have had it made down there in North Carolina. Ah, I knew a couple girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of them came to my dorm many times, even though she was engaged. Oh, you beast. Don't you have any morals? <laughs> Yeah, I worry about that so much, I lost a lot of sleep. <laughs> oh, sure you did, man. Look, look, my goal oh, is to get any so girl I want. Yeah, well, my, uh, my sister wouldn't fall for you. Wanna bet? I won that bet, and his sister was the second girl who told me she was pregnant. The one I was so angry with that I punched the dresser and broke my hand. I wasn't yet 21 years old, and when the first girlfriend was eight months pregnant, her mother came to visit. I'm driving my mother back home tomorrow. All the way to Tennessee? It's less than a day's drive. But you'll have to drive back by yourself. What, what if the baby comes early and there you are, alone on the highway? I'll get help. Yeah, I I'll go along and I'll drive back with you. I'm staying a week, Brett. Look, I can't work with this hand anyway. We drove to Tennessee, and that Sunday her parents asked me if I'd like to go to church with them. I had attended a mainline church a few times in my life, so I went with them. I certainly didn't understand how Christians lived or why they made the choices they did. The people at the service were so happy, singing and clapping their hands. And I listened to the preacher as he talked of God's love and Jesus who died to give us new life. I don't remember all the scripture that he read, but his last words impacted my heart. We love him because he first loved us. Yeah. Right. And he demonstrated that love by laying down his life to save us. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you think no one loves you, Jesus does. He knows every thought, every word you've spoken, every nasty thing you ever did. And yet, he wants to give you new life. He said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Praise God. Praise God. When the disciples felt despair, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hallelujah. And Jesus would never lie to you. Hallelujah. Those words pierced my heart and I began to weep. 
I had been lied to all my life. And I also lived in pretense, never showing my fears or insecurities. I wanted this Jesus who spoke truth. The young man next to me asked if I knew the Lord. Between sobs, I said, no. So, he got the preacher. Do you confess that you're a sinner? <laughs> yes. You must repent of your sins and turn your life over to Jesus because he died for you. If you pray in sincerity, God will give you a new life. I repent, Lord Jesus. I don't, I don't want to be the way I am. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I want you to come into my life and change me and teach me your ways. I, I believe you poured out your lifeblood to set me free. Help me to know you. Help, help me to, to live in your truth. Lord, give him your Holy Spirit to seal him and to guide him. Yes, Lord, I surrender. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. It left me weep for a long time. I could feel God's peace and his presence. This was June 5th, 1995, the greatest day of my life. I was 21 years old. Right away, I got rid of the bag of marijuana I had, and that week I was baptized, and they gave me a Bible. Are you reading the Bible, Brett? Can't put it down. <laughs> I mean, so many things make sense now. When you get home, tell others what Jesus has done for you. I will. Find a good church that teaches the Bible. That is vital for you to grow. I I'll do that. The devil will attack you now, so stay in the Word. The Lord will guide you with His Word. There's so much evil out there, and I was a part of that. Let me give you some verses to help you, okay? In John chapter 10, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Wow, that's amazing. In a moment, we'll hear about Brett's upcoming struggles. We get many requests for prayer from all around the world, everything from finances to marriage and family issues. And of course, we rely on prayer here at Pacific Garden Mission to meet the many needs of the homeless. We know that God answers prayer according to His will. So, if you have some need, write to us, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. We'll join you in prayer and send it on to our prayer band, listeners like you scattered across the country, but united in spirit, who will pray for you. The Bible says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you would like to join our prayer band, write and tell us how often you would like to receive petitions once or twice a month. Write to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address, unshackled at pgm.org. Knowing I had a lot of choices to make, I returned to Pennsylvania, where I told my friends how Jesus gave me new life. They didn't want to hear it, so I moved on. I wanted Jesus more than anything in the world. The father of one of my friends was a Christian, and even though he and I had never talked about the Lord together, I decided to visit him. Hello, Brett. What can I do for you? Uh, well, I, I, I came to tell you that I'm, I'm a Christian now. Last week in Tennessee, I, I gave my life to Christ. Oh, come in, come in. Praise God. That's wonderful news. Gives me hope for my boys. I, I tried to tell him, but 
They weren't interested. Oh, you're still an example to him. How did your own family react? My dad's okay with it, but mom isn't. Oh, give her time and pray for her. Look, I'm praying for my whole family. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. He died to save everyone in the world. I quit doing drugs. I, I, I quit drinking alcohol. It's all so amazing to me. Good. I know a good Bible study for young people. Great. I joined the Bible study and found a good church that I went to each time the doors were open. Chewing tobacco was more difficult to give up until I asked the Lord to help me. He took away the desire. The biggest stronghold, though, was immorality. I hadn't learned to put off the old man or deny myself daily. I became involved with a girl at the Bible study. Finally, I talked with the pastor about it. Does this girl go to our church? No. You know, she's in my youth Bible study. Well, what does God say about these things, Brad? I know. It's not right. No. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Read verse 19 and 20. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price... Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Look, I, I, I know that, but how do I do it? The Bible says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. You have no idea how difficult that is. Every man battles with that, Brett. You must apply the word of God when you're tempted to sin. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. Listen to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. I know it was wrong, but I continued in my sin, even though we were counseled by our pastors. I was consumed with guilt. When she got pregnant, I talked with the pastor again. I know a ministry in the Midwest that helps people who are struggling with sexual sin. Yeah, I, I'd have to go there? Yes, it's a six-month live-in program. Look, I can't leave my job and my family. I I'm in business with my dad, and he depends on me to do all the legwork in the business. You can't keep sinning against the Lord, Brett. Your heart will get hard, and the consequences will be far greater than you can imagine. He was right. One day I woke up with no conviction about my sin. I was horrified. My girlfriend came to my house and searched everywhere, convinced I was hiding another woman. That confrontation led me to a crossroad. Hello. Pastor, uh -huh. it's, it's Brett. I got a shotgun and I'm going to shoot myself. What's going on, Brett? Yeah, I killed our unborn baby tonight. How? My girlfriend came over and I, 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 I couldn't get her to leave. I, I was trying to rush her up the basement stairs and... Then she pushed back and we both fell down and then we went all the way down the stairs. Oh, okay. I, Where is she now? Uh, she went home. I can't believe this happened. There's no hope. No. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end it all. No, no, no. No. Don't do it, Brett. I'm sending someone to help you. Two men from our church came and took the shotgun. One of the men took me home with him. Because of my sinful rebellion, I couldn't attend the Bible study nor the church. I needed to repent before I could return to fellowship with them. I couldn't make it, so I decided to go to the ministry in the Midwest. Thursday, I called to see when I could go. Can you be here on Saturday? Uh, that's two days from now. Yes. I don't know. I, I got a lot to do besides driving down. Do you want help or not? Yeah. Then be here on Saturday. <laughs> Although my dad was furious at me for leaving, 
the Lord helped me get everything done, and I left Pennsylvania for a life-changing experience. The ministry application asked me to describe my relationship with God, rating how much I prayed and read the Bible, how close I was to the Lord, on a scale of one to ten. I thought I was about eh, five. I was shocked when the counselor interviewed me. I'm looking at your form here, and you seem to think that you're really close to the Lord, huh? Yeah, I love the Lord. Then I don't see that you really need to be here. What? what that, no, that, that's not what I meant. It's what it says. No, no I, I don't care what it says. Look, I gotta be here. I need help. Well, you claim to know God, but you father three children out of wedlock with three different women. Do you think God condones that? No! That's why I'm here. I, I want to be free of all this, these lustful passions. Well, sexual sin is rooted in pride and selfishness, using others, and this form reveals that. Until you recognize and repent of your pride and selfishness, you'll never be free. Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Look, I do study the Bible. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You need a teachable spirit to overcome your addiction to yourself. To myself? Yes. You see others as objects. To be used for your own pleasure, you've been self-absorbed and self-gratifying. God created us for a different purpose. Well, it's hard to resist temptation. I mean, there's TV, billboards, magazines, and all of them have alluring and provocative pictures. So don't look. Or, or look away. Yeah, easy for you to say. Memorize Psalm 101. Verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. You have to speak the word of God to situations that tempt you. That's what Jesus did. Y you'll, you'll take me then? If you'll be honest with us. I wasn't raised in a Christian home, so look, I, I, got, I, I got a lot to learn. There's no excuses. If you apply the word of God to your life, he will set you free. Are you the counselor here? We have several counselors. The sessions are once a week for a half an hour. Th that's all? The psalmist says, thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Oh, okay. Start with 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He was right. Like me, the 20 to 30 men there, struggling with sexual obsessions, were proud and arrogant. Each of us thought we only needed a little help, but we needed a complete transformation. I signed up for six months. I stayed for 13. I moved into an apartment and went to a local church. Has your father forgiven you for leaving Pennsylvania? Uh, he's speaking to me now. I gave him my house and he sold it and I didn't ask for any of the profit. So what else is going on, Brett? Uh, I'm, I'm dating a girl named Tiffany and I'm struggling with the same old lustful thoughts. Well, if you want to banish those thoughts, pray for her and pray from the heart. Whenever I'm tempted, I pray. Whether it's lust, jealousy, bitterness, whatever, the Lord will help you because he knows your limitations. Sometimes I start praying and slip back into old thought patterns, or, or I start praying for ways I can help them. Well, that's pride again. Self-seeking. Self-promotion. Ah, <sighs> will I ever beat it down? That's why we're told to pray without ceasing. It's a way of life, Brett. Thank God for Jesus. <music> Tiffany and I met at church, and we married in July 1999. Several months later, we both became interns at the same place that helped me. We spent eight months there preparing for ministry. Got some legal papers today from the mother of my oldest son. Her husband wants to adopt him. Are you going to sign? Yeah. She's a Christian, and her husband has been raising my son like his own. God bless him. Yeah, amen. Fathers are the covering of the home. We sure learn from our mistakes, don't we? Sins, honey. God calls them sins. Yes, you're right. We must call it what the Bible calls it. And the remedy is Jesus. Yes. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I've learned so much here. And the main thing I've learned is how to show mercy to others, the way God shows mercy to us. Is that what you tell the men you counsel? That, and I stress their need to know the word of God. 
It's what set me free. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I love those verses in the Gospel of John. If only I had known Jesus when I was growing up. God tells us to live in the present, not the past, Brett. Yeah, I know. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Old Testament, right? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19. He sure made the way in the wilderness for Israel, and he's made a way for us too. Yeah, he's given us rivers in the desert. Ten years ago, we were led to a church ministry in Wisconsin. God gave us two sons and a daughter, and I want to be a godly father for our children. Sometimes when the pastor travels, I fill in for him, and I tell them what Jesus has done for me. It's true what the Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen, brother. God has changed the way I think, act, and speak. He's changed my desires. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold... All things are become new. Amen. That's what Jesus Christ can do in any life surrendered to Him. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Listening friend, if you were tired of struggling against your own sinful nature, put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will give you his Holy Spirit to counsel and guide you. You can do that now, wherever you are. There are no special words. God looks on the heart. If you need help in making this crucial decision, get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607.